Welcome to the Melbourne School of Design. My name is Donald Bates and I'm the Professor of Architectural Design in what is one of the preeminent schools of architecture and the built environment. At the MSD, we offer graduate level studies in architecture, architectural engineering, landscape architecture, property, construction, urban planning and urban design. We're a comprehensive school, one of the few globally to offer such a range and scope of study areas. We foster a multidisciplinary approach to current issues within the built environment. The new MSD building that we occupy has won many awards for its design and is recognized as one of the most beautiful schools in the world. In fact, it's a teaching and pedagogical tool in its own right, with aspects of the building left exposed for students to learn what goes into the design and construction of such a building. We have one of Australia's best fabrication workshops, enabling students and staff to immerse themselves in digital design techniques, model making, 3D printing, and other hands-on contemporary design practices. Our traveling studios are a distinctive feature of our program. These take our students to remote parts of Australia, to Europe, India, China, and even South America. Now that you've had a taste of what the MSD can offer, we'll take you through the preparation of your design portfolio. It's your opportunity to show us your skills as a designer and to communicate your experience, your passions, your ambition, and your creativity. It's important that you put together a strong portfolio for your application in order to give yourself the best chance of success and admission into the program. In order to help you with that, I'm gonna run through a presentation of the do's and don'ts in the preparation of your portfolio. Just to remind you for the programs to require a portfolio, it's for the Master of Architecture, the three-year program, the Master of Architecture, the two-year program, Master of Architectural Engineering, Master of Landscape Architecture, two-year program, and Master of Urban Design. There is not a portfolio required for the three-year Master of Landscape Architecture. And of course, there's no portfolio required for entry into our Bachelor of Design program. The design portfolio. This statement by Harold Linton gives you some background to how we think of uh, the portfolio and what role it has. It's clearly something about collecting what you've done, but it's also a way of demonstrating who you are, how you think, how you work, and why you would be a valuable asset to our program. The design portfolio. It's really a collection of your assets, that is, your design work. It's there to show your skill in thinking as a designer, but it's also there to show how well you can communicate your ideas, different techniques, different means, different methodologies, of being able to communicate how you think and how you see different architectural projects. It's a project in its own right. That is, you have to treat it as something that you put as much effort into as if it was a project uh, in some form or another. Design portfolio template. On our website, there's a template that gives you advice and recommendations on how to put together your design portfolio. It lists out the requirements and the restrictions for what you're able to submit, but it also gives you a list of the portfolio evaluation. That is, the criteria by which we make a decision based on your portfolio of whether you're an appropriate candidate for our program. Here's a matrix of the criteria we use for the portfolio evaluation. As you can see, it's broken down into three major topics. One, evidence of three-dimensional thinking and spatial understanding. Two, evidence of conceptual thinking and design ambition. And three, evidence of design resolution. Each of these categories then has subsections which go into more detail about what we expect in a design portfolio and how we judge that in terms of those that we think have merit, those that are satisfactory, and those which are not satisfactory. Here's what you should do in submitting your design portfolio. Make sure it includes a short CV on the content page. Make sure you include at least three or four academic design projects within the portfolio. Be sure to indicate the year, the subject name, the project title for each project. It's very important we understand when you did this and under what conditions the work was done. The layouts need to be professional. We suggest you do this in InDesign or a sim similar software layout. 
package. It needs to demonstrate that you have some sense of care and precision with it. We want to see the range of your skill set. So hand drawings, computer drawings, construction drawings, sketches, models, photography, renderings, diagrams, all the things that show the range of which you're able to communicate and develop your design ideas. If you do show professional work, make sure you state your role and responsibility in the project. Be sure to annotate your drawings and images. Give us a little bit, just a caption, that tells us what it is and what it's about. Include any links to projects or portfolios outside, like videos, which are beyond what's contained in the design portfolio. And make sure you check your drawing. Make sure you check the spelling. If English is not your first language, then you make sure that someone else helps you to make sure that the, the spelling and the grammar are correct. And be economic with your pages. Use them for your work, not for lots of thank yous and extraneous information. This is what you should not do. You shouldn't overcomplicate the layout with your graphic design. Don't overcrowd the pages with too many images or tiny photographs or lots and lots of text. If you put in renderings and drawings, use your very best ones. It doesn't help us to consider you if you put in really bad work. Same thing goes with photography. It's not enough just to have photographed a model. Make sure the photograph gives us a clear understanding of your design work. Check to make sure that your images that you put in aren't pixelated, that they're of a too low resolution. We want crisp, clear images because it's all being reviewed on a screen. Again, avoid spelling mistakes and grammatical errors. Check your text to make sure it reads in proper English. Do not exceed the large file size. We won't accept a PDF that's greater than 10 megabytes. And also, please don't print the PDF as a large spread across a couple of pages. Again, this is being read on a computer screen, and if you do so, it makes the image so small we can barely read it. Please don't exceed the 15 to 20 page limit. And don't use pages with excessive introductions, thank yous, or repeating information that's found in the project itself. Here's an example of somebody's content page. And as you can see, it clearly outlines the projects that have been worked on and where they are within the submitted portfolio. I'm going to run through now some examples of work that's previously been submitted to us for portfolio evaluation and hopefully give you some sense of what kind of work we're looking for. Not that we're looking for anything in particular, but just in terms of the range of work, the quality of the work, and how the pages themselves are laid out. This page here, you see, has a very clear, singular image about a project with a clear written description in the top left-hand corner to give us a background to the work. It's a strong image, well rendered, good lighting, figures are, seem to be the right scale and proportion, so it gives us a good sensibility to this design work and the care to which the student has produced it. On this page, we see a whole range of different drawings. We see a nice large section, perspective section at the bottom that gives us a sense of the scale and relationship to the site. Then a series of diagrams that show the development of this, the project, the development of the site, the building and the terrain, the public spaces, all well annotated and with a text that gives us some background to what the project is. On this drawing, again, same project, we see more detailed plans, again, nicely laid out, all to a certain scale, a site plan or the master plan, and the elevations, again with a text that helps us to understand what the project was about and how the design was developed. Other projects have a mix between sections, plans, elevations, as well as a site analysis. So even though there's a lot of information on this page, it's all clearly laid out, all easily readable, and all well presented. In this image, again, we have a mix between images of the finished project, some renderings of what it might be like in plan, the, the plan itself, a large description, and then a series of diagrams that give a background to how the design developed and what the references and the thematics are to the project. Again, in this image for a boathouse, we have a whole range of information. 
So in effect, this project is being encapsulated more or less on a single page. A site plan, some sense of the three-dimensionality of it, series of plans, axonometrics, internal views, and a series of diagrams explaining the major component spaces and how they fit together with a fairly succinct text. In this image, we have a much more traditional form of a large cutaway section view at the bottom, a few uh, renderings that show the elevations, an axonometric, exploded axonometric, to give a sense of the various uh, levels of the project and how they stack up on top of each other, and then a set of plans. Again, a very clear layout, very readable, very defined set of relationships with the images. This is a really nice image of a large-scale master plan showing a, a, a complex arrangement of houses and gardens. Again, a very strong image in the foreground that grabs our attention. And then smaller images to the bottom explaining the concepts and the differences that are part of the whole uh, precinct that's been developed here. Here's a larger scale master plan project showing the site, the location within the city, how the different views and the different aspects come. There's a lot of information on this page, and to some degree there may be a little bit too much, but it's all there together and gives a sense overall very quickly of the project. In this image, we've also included both a description of what type of project it is, its location, when it was undertaken, the overall size, who the instructor was, who worked on the project, and what the main role of this student was in the project. These are important when displaying and giving information on group projects. Here's a fairly simple project, again, rendered with a, a good sense of scale, good sense of materiality, some relationships back to some earlier work with the, the small models, and then the elevation. In this set of images, there's a whole series, again, of sort of diagrammatic development of showing the, the project. This is a good start, but in a way it leaves one expecting a little bit more. It takes up a lot of space on a whole page just to show a process. It could have probably had a bit more information of how the process developed and where it's gone. Again, on this image, although it's trying to show a few different things, as you can see the images are quite pixelated. They don't read very well. It's hard to really understand what's being said. It's hard to read the text. So in this sense, it's not really conveying the information that needs to be conveyed. Here on this page, we have uh, fairly clear text and such, but it's the way it's laid out doesn't really give us much information about the overall project. Everything remains very schematic and very broad. There's very little detail to it. The layout itself is a bit of a mishmash with overlapping pieces and such. It's competent, but doesn't really offer the best uh, impression of a student's work. The same goes as extension to this page, part of the same project. The renderings, the perspectives are not very good. They're very schematic. They're not, the colors are very um, unappealing and not very convincing. The relationship to the plan and what the project actually is still doesn't tell us very much about what it is that we're looking at and again, doesn't give the project in the best possible light. Here's a page that was presented that's supposed to give some information on different aspects of the project, but again, as you can see, it's far too diminished in scale. We can't read the text. We don't know what the relationships are. Although it has a graphic quality with the colors and the, the lines, we really have no idea what we're being told with this and is a wasted opportunity. Here we see a project that's been submitted. And if we look at it, we can see the deficiencies. The fact that the background is still pixelated and all kind of furry and, and fuzzy. There's an issue with scale in terms of how the perspective is laid into the existing context. There are shadows that don't match with other images. So the, some of the shadows makes it unclear where is the light really coming from. The perspective itself is not particularly good and it doesn't give us a very good impression of the design itself. Here's an image that's been submitted with a portfolio. As you can see, somebody spent a lot of time making a, a physical model. They put a lot of time into the fabrication and the construction of this small model. 
But they photographed it in a way which doesn't present it in the best possible light. Uh, there's insufficient contrast in the photography, so they didn't use any directional lighting that would help to bring out the qualities of, of the, the framing and the wood and the model itself. The image is not particularly in focus, so it looks a little blurry in the edges and such. It's at a kind of strange angle. It just seems to be set on a table someplace in a workshop. There's a distracting background, a confusing horizon, so that we're not really sure what else we're seeing. It's hard to focus on the project itself. And there's a competition between the surface that it's sitting on and the color of the model itself. Although the project is interesting and looks to have value, it's presented in a way that diminishes our ability to appreciate it and to give it a positive evaluation. Here's an example of some models that a student has photographed and the difference between one that's photographed at a home studio with strong light versus a home studio with insufficient light. On the left we have one that really makes us understand and allows us to evaluate the object, the design intent of that object. On the right, because of the, the lighting, we don't really understand exactly what the project is and what its extent is, and it diminishes our ability to appreciate it. Here's an image that does give us some sense. It's an intriguing image. We're not quite sure what the project is, but it does give us a sense of this object and its qualities in terms of its translucency, in terms of its structure, in terms of its multiple layers. So a strong photograph helps us to look at the work with more appreciation and into more detail about the architectural ideas. When writing a project description, make sure that you're very concise and very direct. Don't go on for a long time because nobody has the time to read all of the text. So state very clearly the project brief, what were the site, the issues, the constraints of the problem, and then what is the concept that underwrites it? What is your design strategy? How are you responding to it? And please try to keep it below 100 to 120 words. And finally, be sure and ask your peers, your friends, or a tutor to proofread your document before submitting the file to SlideRoom. It's really important that you make sure before you send it off that it's really been checked for grammar, for spelling, but also gr in terms of the graphic design and making sure it all holds together. Resubmission of a portfolio is not permitted. Therefore, applicants who receive an unsuccessful outcome based on their folio must reapply for the next available intake with a totally new portfolio. So me, please make sure that what you submit Put your submission and your assessment in the best possible light. There's additional resources if you want to know a little bit more about the production of an architect's portfolio, and please use these as references to make sure you produce a high quality submission. I hope that was informative and will allow you to comfortably submit your portfolio with your degree application. Visit our website for more information and to submit your application. We look forward to welcoming you at the Melbourne School of Design.